What's up everyone, it's your boy NornRad89 here bringing you another video today. And for today's video, we're gonna start a review series that I planned probably like, I think earlier this year or like last year, but you know, life gets in the way, you know, you have family, you got a job, you got other videos going on and other content. So this just kinda got put on the back burner. But today, I wanted to start my review series as we are gonna go through all of the Nightmare on Elm Street films, talking about every single one of them. Of course, we're gonna be starting out with the 1984 original Wes Craven's Nightmare on Elm Street. We're gonna talk about that bad boy today, and this isn't gonna be like your typical rad movie review. Like, we're gonna talk about my feelings on Freddy Krueger, my history with Freddy and Nightmare on Elm Street, and why I'm so attached to this franchise, because this is one of my favorite horror franchises of all time so let's get into this video but we're also going to do you know a rating and everything and talk about some positives and negatives as well so let's do this roll it So first off, let's kind of start off with my history with Nightmare on Elm Street. This is a franchise that I've kind of got introduced to at a very young age. Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2, Freddy's Revenge, is actually the first horror movie that I ever remember visibly seeing in front of my eyes as a young child. And my mom is a Fred head, so this is always something that's been around me in terms of memorabilia. She had t-shirts and stuff like that, so it's always been around me and during my childhood. I didn't really start diving into the franchise, though, until later years, probably like middle school era when I was like around 11 and 12. And that's that perfect era of being like said, like during that summer, probably around 11 or 12 years old, going to Hollywood video, going to video update, just renting Nightmare on Elm Street part one, part two, part three, then going back the next day or a few days later after I watched the other ones, returning them and grabbing part four and part five, you know, and really watching them up until that point, I think they only went up to New Nightmare. Um, the Freddy vs. Jason wasn't out yet, but it was coming out. And I think that's why I really started diving into them is because this was on the cusp. I think Freddy vs. Jason was coming out either that next year or that year, that August. So I knew I would just really wanted to get involved in the franchise and really know where it was coming from. So I started binging and watching all of them. Then I started collecting them too and having the snapper cases. I don't know if you guys remember those, but the old school snapper DVD cases. I'll have a picture up here right here started collecting those bad boys. So that's why this franchise I hold near, dear, close to my heart because there's a couple key moments in my life where just Nightmare on Elm Street, it was all about that. It was all about Freddy. It was all about renting the movies, going out and finding them and buying them, watching the full screen and widescreen editions and just really getting myself immersed in this world. And in terms of my thoughts on the franchise, I think Wes Craven, the main key reason why Nightmare on Elm Street stands the test of time is that it's just such a good concept, you know what I mean? Freddy Krueger being this dream demon, this guy that could hunt you down in your sleep, that, that moment when you feel you're supposed to feel the most comfortable, you're supposed to feel the most safe, but this man, this evil, like I said, dream demon is able to find you and hunt you down, and the fact that it's portrayed by Robert England, who has just absolutely made Freddy Krueger an icon. Like, in terms of, you know, slasher, uh, characters and main villains like Jason, Michael Myers, Leatherface, Freddy. I think Freddy Krueger was really the first one that really broke the doors open and really went into other ver versions of media. You know what I mean? Television and being in MTV music videos and all kinds of stuff. You know, Robert England really penetrated pop culture for sure with this character. So that's something else that I think Jason and the others weren't really able to do. Yes, they're popular. Don't get me wrong. Halloween, Friday the 13th. Like I'm a huge Friday the 13th is my number one thing. They're really popular, but you know, there's something about Freddy Krueger, just what he was able to do, and like I said, penetrate pop culture in such a way, especially throughout the 80s. So, some other key positives I love about this movie, besides our Robert England performance as Freddy Krueger and the concept of the idea in Wes Craven's direction, it's just such a creepy film. This first film is like the first two, I think, are actually scary movies. Nightmare on Elm Street Part One and Part Two are the ones that kind of root themselves in more strong horror with a little bit of fantasy. It's not until we get into like Dream Warriors and Dream Master and Child that we started adding a lot more comedy, a lot more one-liners. They started giving Robert England a little bit more room to be more charismatic, more personality to the Freddy Krueger character, which I'm, I'm not mad at. I don't hate that. Like I said, there's just there's something about these first two films that stick out as really getting under your skin and being more creepy movies. Another fantastic thing that I love about this movie is this movie is just literally 
littered with all kinds of fantastic cast members. We have John Saxon. We have Heather Langenkamp. We have Johnny Depp, a very young Johnny Depp. We have Lynn Shea in here playing the teacher. And like, oh, there's just so many fantastic cast members that like when you see them, especially me being such a horror fan, I love just picking out their faces. And that's why this one, it calls back to home because it just really roots down in slasher films. It has such a good cast, a good iconic character and a really good concept. And like I said, this pulls me back right back to being a kid in the you know 90s and the early 2000s just renting all these movies and watching them also we have to talk about the kills like the kills in here are very creative and very iconic as well like we're talking about tina's death scene the skin the cat scene going all the way up the wall like that is just a fantastic scene that when you see it on screen it's just it's very unbelievable when you're witnessing it almost seems like a dream then we have johnny depp's death scene which is probably in my top five death scenes of all time in terms of Freddy Krueger movies so like yeah there's a lot to love in terms of the creativity that went into this movie and like that's why I think Wes Craven's The Nightmare on Elm Street stands the test of time as being such a strong film because it really kick-started this franchise it's the house that New Line built like for real like it's kind of crazy that it took Wes Craven and Bob Shea so long to get a production company to back this movie and actually put it on screen because for real, Nightmare on Elm Street is a fantastic movie with a great concept and, you know, props to New Line Cinema for having the balls to grab this film and put it on screen. Now we can always, like I said, talk some negatives because I don't think this is a perfect film. I don't even necessarily, like, you know me, I don't think Nightmare on Elm Street is the best film in the franchise. There's others that improve on this formula. So in terms of some negatives, Negatives is that there are some subpar acting in here you of course there are very beginner actors but in terms of other ones like you know like Johnny Depp and there's some side characters like kind of the friends I don't have a problem with Heather Langenkamp in terms of final girls I actually fast fa uh, fancy her more than Laurie Strode I think Heather Langenkamp as Nancy is a more interesting more a, a character that I gravitate towards more than Laurie Strode's character in terms of comparing final girls but the cast around Heather Langenkamp her young friends and stuff like that typically actually the boys like I think the boy actors are kind of bad the young ones Johnny Depp in particular you can tell it's his very very first movie so yeah subpar acting in some moments but clearly the major, major negative with this film is literally the last two minutes. Like the last two and a half minutes of this movie where they decide to end this movie off completely bogs this movie down and ruins it. And it kind of sucks because that was a tussle between Wes Craven and Bob Shea in terms of creative ideas. Wes Craven wanted there to be a much more finality type ending. The kids got away. They won much more successful positive ending. And Bob Shea wanted to leave the doors open for possible sequels to have, you know, Freddy Krueger come back. And, of course, for the ability for them to make more money because, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street is going to be one of those franchises. As you're going to learn when we're going through this review series, every film that came out just made more and more and more money in the theaters so they were just printing money at this point so yes there's a couple you know negatives one huge glaring negative and just a small nitpicky negative in terms of the film but nightmare on elm street like i said is still a film that i really enjoy i really adore and like i said this franchise in general holds a very special place in my heart being that my mom introduced me to it it's one of her favorite horror franchises and her favorite horror icon and like i said this is in terms of physical media collecting was a big proponent and making me a collector, making me want to go out and find, search for movies and stuff like that. Nightmare on Elm Street was a big part of that, this franchise. So in terms of a rating, though, I know you guys, we have to settle down on a rating for this bad boy. A Nightmare on Elm Street, this first film is going to get a very solid 8 out of 10. The reason it gets knocked down to that 8 out of 10, though, is because this really could be like a 9 or a 9.5 out of 10 film if I just had to deal with that subpar acting. But really, that ending, that last two minutes and a half really just doesn't make any sense. It's just, it doesn't make any sense. That's what bothers me. I don't understand it. And to have it where it's just, you know, Freddy Krueger like rips the mom through that door. And it's like the kids are in the car trapped in the top, you know, has Freddy's thing on it. And it drives away and it's Freddy Krueger laughing and the car's locked up. It's just, it's such a campy, cheesy ending that really was nothing like the rest of the movie. And that's what sucks is because tonally wise, it was completely different from the rest of the movie. You know what I mean? It fits some of the later Nightmare on Elm Street movies, but it doesn't fit 
this first 1984 movie. So I think that's why, like I said, it's such a glaring negative. But still, an 8 out of a 10 is a very strong rating. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video and stick around to the channel and have that notification bell poke so you're notified anytime I post a video. So you are down with me as we take along on this journey going through all the Nightmare on Elm Street films. Next, we're going to be on to Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2, Freddy's Revenge, then Dream Warriors. So like I said, you want to stay tuned to the channel. But most importantly, I want y'all to have a safe and happy day. Peace out.